Good afternoon, everyone. It's the one, the only, the Senor Silverback on another edition of Trading Terror Dome with none other than the infamous Algo Capitalist, Dex. And we are coming to you live. Dex, what's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? Making it Man. do what it do. Yo, I just want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I was telling you off air, and I just want the world to know Dex, the Algo Capitalist, is the gorilla's favorite Valentine. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's dude? What's going on, man? I think I sent you a, a, a link to an article. I don't know if you saw it or not, but yes, I did. Yeah. What you do? It was like the algos rule the world or something like that, right? Yeah, it was. It was basically um, breaking down and showing the truth behind the, the situation with what's going on with these algos. And like I've been telling people all along that algorithms rule the world yep. and now they came up with the article that you're referring to and it was a, it was breaking down how it started out you know on wall street with them getting rid of their trading floors or whittling yep. it down to just a, a handful of people i can relate to that i i think i i discussed that a while back breaking down how um you know Trading has been taken over now by algorithms. It's all robotic. But now they want to spill that over into Main Street. So everything starts on Wall Street, and then it goes to Main Street. So now there was another article that I, that I saw, and I think this was on the was it Daily News or something. Anyhow, um, they were breaking down the fact that they're going to start rolling these machines out into other sectors. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they were talking about um, a lot of the white collar middle class jobs being yeah. replaced by automation as well. Wow. And they were, you know, going sector by sector and breaking it down. And they were saying that this is going to eliminate like 90% across the board of employment. Dude, what kind of sectors do you think is in trouble with this uh, rise of the machines? Like Skynet's going active over here, bro. Well, I can tell you it's already starting. It's not something that they're talking about, you know, 20 years from now. They're already rolling this out. And so on the retail side, all of your cashiers are in trouble. They're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, anything that has to do with... Um, Finance, those people are in trouble yeah. because now they have algorithms now to, to do mortgages. Mm. So you don't have to um, use a human being for that either. A machine is going to do that. A machine is going to automate just about every processes you can think of. So you won't need people to do a lot of these jobs. And I'm talking about white collar type jobs. Yeah. The only thing that's safe is like if you're a doctor or a dentist you know, a lawyer or something like that, that's safe. But other than that, everything else is on the chopping block. Yeah, and it's it's coming out now. This is happening now as we speak. It's not, yeah. like I said, in the distant future. Um, right. they, they already rolled out. Like I told, I was telling people, um, banks, I forget which bank it was. There's a bank. Is it Wells Fargo? Who is it? Can't remember the name of the bank, but they were saying in the article as well, that this bank is rolling out the, you know, um, these uh, branches where there are no people there. Yeah, Bank Everything. of America. There you go. It's all automated. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, that's not new. The automated no. process is not new. The first pilot, uh, I believe it was Union Bank. And I know that pilot started in Maryland. Uh, it was in Prince George's County, Maryland, where you walked into the bank. And there were no people there. This was the late 90s, like around the late 90s to like 2000. Yeah. You walk in and there are no people. It's just like these uh, little terminals, if you will. And it would do everything for you. You could do everything. It was just, it was hilarious. But now here was the, here was the catch, though. There were people in there. But mm -hmm. the people were behind a wall. And they... <laughs> What they were doing behind the wall, I have no idea. But there were some people behind the wall. You couldn't see them. You couldn't really talk to them. They, they were not supposed to be there. You're supposed to ignore them, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And then after that, it went away. 
I didn't see it. it. Maybe it lasted a year, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I, my dates are off. Like I said, I know it was like the early two thousands, late nineties. I believe it was around the time, either just before the DC Sniper, mm-hmm. or yeah, it was it was before the DC Sniper. So yeah, it had to be like late nineties, early two thousands. But anyway, now they're trying to they're, they're going to roll this out more mainstream now. Uh, in addition to that, guess what else they were talking about? What's up? And you know, I, for those of you who don't know, I go into depth about this in my video series called "There Is No Collapse." If you have not listened to that, you need to listen to it in its entirety. I go into full detail, full length, everything that we're talking about and have been talking about. Mm -hmm. But the article was going on to say, too, and um, how they're taking and making the cashless society now full, full speed ahead. Other countries have already started it. Europe just came out and passed uh, a rule saying that uh, you can't conduct any transactions over 500 euros. Yeah. You, you're not allowed to do that in cash, and that starts in 2018, mm-hmm. and, they just, and they just passed that rule. So all this stuff is right here in your face, you guys. It, it's here. We are here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's already there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the the taking the cash out of the system they're actually going to to phase two with that they've been doing it incrementally for a while yeah taking cash out penalizing us whenever we wanted to convert digital currency into physical currency there's always a price to pay when you go to a foreign atm they charge you money some banks even charge you money if you're using your own atm with them right um so it's just it's it's more penalization to get you accustomed to operating without cash in your in, in your hand and that's what we are and the reason being that they're giving is counterterrorism measures we yeah. know that's baloney it has nothing to do with terrorism it has everything to do with control right right uh, uh, you're absolutely right about it, it has absolutely jack crap to do with um, terrorism with anything else. It, 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 these guys are control freaks, man. Yes. It, it really is. And um, it's funny because uh, um, when you think about how technology has changed things in a lot of ways for the better, what we don't look at is the unintended consequences of how robots and machines and algorithms and androids are replacing humans Mm -hmm. and not just in the job front but they're starting to replace human beings on the social front as well oh bots bro i mean oh my god i mean who hasn't got i mean have you gotten harassed by a bot yet like you're on like skype and all of a sudden a bot just comes out and starts talking to you yes it's annoying yes it is and a little spooky too yeah it really is but there, but now what I mean though is I mean physical androids to replace human relationships. Sure, that yeah, I mean that's it, coming it's out. It's gotten now. to the point where you got sex bots too, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Yep, and they're really starting to manufacture those things big time. Yeah, and remember, it's all a chip, so it's the bounds are limitless. Because mm-hmm. all they have to do, you know that what's that thing that they've been advertising this this little uh, spherical shaped thing? Was it Watson or whatever it is? And it talks to you. You ask it a question, and it, and it can answer yeah. you. Series. There you go. So imagine putting a series inside of that. Imagine artificial intelligence going inside the Android, where you yeah. can actually now hold a conversation with it, where you can right. program it to. Um, always, you know, big you up, never say anything rude or, or, or bad to you. It's always something nice. You know what I'm saying? And think about it. It's basically a slave. So remember that it's always the opposite end result when you're talking about machines. So if the initial push is to, um, make one's life better, Mm-hmm. And it, it it would appear that you are that the that the computer or the program or the or the machine is a slave to you. 
that's just to reel you in. At the end, we become slaves to the machines. Yeah. Because remember, any anything that is superior always enslaves the inferior. Mm -hmm. So if you give the machine all of your power, it's going to take the power because we're talking about you know droids and robots that have artificial intelligence and can think and have the ability to do that. You, right. see, you see what I'm saying? Right. So the other dangerous thing is like you know you talk about these bots and whatnot and and you get you know <clears throat> virtual reality. Um, people are losing touch with themselves, man. People are losing touch with, with I mean, with reality in general. You know, right. and, and and I mean, look at fintech. I mean, look look at all the advancement being made in that as well, and also the fact like how many Wall Street firms are going to be betting on VR and augmented reality and all these other things, bro. They already have. Just going back to the first article, where mm. they replaced all the human traders with algorithms. Mm. Think about, look at it this way. It's all math. The people who are left that are still employed there, yeah. they're all um, computer science engineers. Yeah. They're not traders. So you need right. to ask yourself another question. So the people that are programming these algorithms are not traders. The dudes graduating out of MIT, et cetera, with these computer degrees. So they're, 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 they're coders. They're programmers. Sure. But they don't know diddly squat about markets. What do you think is going to happen a few years from now when you have people who don't understand markets never traded a day in their life, but yet they're making these programs for these firms and hedge funds to do high speed, high frequency trading with. Yeah. At some point, there's going to be a massive, massive breakdown because you've right. taken away the human element. Instead right. of using tr real traders to, to program these systems, they're just using these, these grad students, man. Come on. Mm. How, how far do you think you're going to get with that? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but just remember, too, at the end of the day, a computer program is only worth the person who programmed it. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely correct. And, and we, need to, we need to do the knowledge to that because that's where we are right now. So if you have a person who is, let's say, a, uh, you know, some type of uh what's the word we're looking for? I can't think straight. Um a quant? Nah, nah, nah. Person with antisocial behavior. All right, okay. All right, you got them programming these computers and putting and inputting the artificial intelligence into it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than a Charles Manson except an Android Charles Manson. Yeah. Think about it that way. Yeah. Right. Because the computer program is getting your ideas, it's getting your concepts, it's getting your world view. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to have. We're gonna, and a computer is already cold and heartless anyway. So now imagine the person that's programming it is putting those Mal things malicious in. things into it. Exactly. No, no, we got a serious problem, bro. We've been had a problem. Yeah. And there's the rub. So on one hand, they can, I mean, look at it this way. Have you ever heard until ne until now a person's cell phone or pad exploding? Come on, that's something out of out of a James Bond movie. Pens and a, per a person's pen or cell phone exploding? No, your cell mean, phones and tablets. Remember in the news, people cell phones yeah. and stuff were blowing up. Yeah, the Samsung uh, Galaxy Fireball. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Blown off genitals and, and, and breasts and whatnot, dude. It's Come crazy. on. I mean, it, it, it's a, it, it is a terrorist device, a oh, weapon yeah. of mass destruction. It is showing <laughs> you what the ability of this technology is. And you can build that in just about anything. Oh, I don't like what this person said about such and such. Let's go ahead and push the button and explode. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. If somebody wanted head. to blow up your cell phone... Uh, right. They could possibly do that remotely from overheating. I mean, how many times have uh, we we've all held cell phones at some point where the, all of a sudden the things like getting ridiculously hot out of nowhere? Right, I've seen that happened a million times. You know, all it is is a program. Yeah, all it is is a, is a software download. That's all it is. Think about it. Mm -hmm. It's just an app. Everything's been reduced to an app. You well, can make an app to do anything. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we got the dark side and we got the bright side. But right now it's looking it's looking pretty bleak. What's going to happen when all these millions of jobs are, go away because they're being replaced by machines? See, they have us fighting with each other, talking about, you know, um, deporting, you know, people who are here illegally and shutting down the border. And Man, that's the least of your problems. Mm-hmm. That dude that you're trying to kick out of the country or keep from coming in the country, he don't mean you no harm. He just wants to try to escape to what he believes is the land of the free, the home of the brave. Yeah. What you should be thinking about is how this computer is going to replace you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, so, I mean, already at the point is, I mean, McDonald's already pilot tested and Wendy's as well. Like, you know, robo kitchens, robo ordering, where the whole thing is run by two or three people. Best example, man, look at Amazon Go. Mm-hmm. Look at that store, bro. It's manned by three people. You just activate your, uh, your, your Amazon app. You walk in, you grab whatever you want off the shelf, and you walk out, and it's charged to your Amazon account. Right. All done using NFC. Everything's been reduced to computer algorithms. Yeah. And that's where you are, which is so hilarious because it's like a lot of people didn't see this coming. It's almost like whiplash. Mm. You know, it, it's crazy, but it, it is unintended consequences. So we have there has to be a way to scale back some of this some of this stuff. Because yeah, it's good to have but understand that the people who are who are coming out with this is really the people who is going to benefit, not the people below it. Like today, um, Donald Trump signed that uh, into law that bill to um, to start repealing um, the Commodities uh, Act to make it easier for commodities companies to operate, mm-hmm. which is supposed to bring jobs in. Mm-hmm. But again unintended consequences so yeah. we'll see how this plays out but you know dodd frank is the next thing on the chopping block yeah yeah the question is what is it going to look like are they really going to repeal the whole thing you know honestly it, it's when you look at the whole entire thing i mean okay we're, we're, I, I don't see any i mean unless you're in engineering and you're making this kind of stuff Look at f- fintech is really changing the financial game. I mean, we, you and I both know, eighty six, eighty, almost eighty six percent of all market trades are just done computer, computer, algorithmically with no human involvement. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and when, and I'm sure that you and you and I have said so many times on this on the show, Wall Street's not on Wall Street. It's across the river in a server room in Jersey. Yep. Okay? It's, I mean, bro, what's left? I mean, okay, you ease Dodd Frank, but what the hell does that really mean? What does that really mean? Are you easing it for to to create more jobs for for whom is the question, right? Yeah, because here's the thing, you know, if they were if we were to go back to 1999, all right, let's say they they they, they roll all that back. There's no more Dodd Frank and Glass Steagall. They're done. That means you can open up a trading account with for 500 bucks and day trade stocks all day long. No pattern day trade rule and none of that. You can mm-hmm. trade spot metals again in your forex account. You know, life is good, right? Yeah. The, que- the question will be, if all the jobs are taken away at the same time, who's going to be able to benefit from this Dodd-Frank going away along with Glass-Steagall? Nobody. Yeah. It's like a day late and a dollar short. Mm-hmm. It should have never come into place in the first place. We should have never put government in the way of business operations anyway. Correct. So we we're the ones who who built this this mammoth giant, and now we want to slay the beast. How are you going to slay the giant that you built? It's not going to work. It yeah. sounds nice, but how it, 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 you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. Godzilla's out, my man. Yeah, I mean it, it all sounds great, but you know. What's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? It, it's like giving someone... I, w- I want to be clear what I'm saying. I think and I believe, my opinion, that taking away Dodd, Frank, and Glass-Steagall is a great thing because you like, don't want the government taking involved. Away, 
and oh, this. Taking away, you said taking away Dodd Frank and Glass Steagall, or you mean taking away Dodd Frank and putting in Glass Steagall? Nah, I think we should not have a Glass Steagall or Dodd Frank. Uh, why? I mean, I can understand the Dodd Frank thing, but why Glass Steagall? Well, because if you if you allow free enterprise to take shape and do what they do then you wouldn't need the government stepping in and telling everybody how and where to do things. We don't have a free marketplace. Right. Because we have too much government reg rules and regulations hamstringing everybody. Look at, it, look at it this way. Before all of that came into play, you really didn't have any problems. They just mm -hmm. put it there. The problems came after the fact. You, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you got to remove the government. Get the, get the boot off of the neck. Right. Because no, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with you know making a more free market. Uh, the only thing Glass Steagall did is prevent the the spec. It prevented the uh, the the major Wall Street banks from dipping into the coffers of the local regional bank, and which created the mess that we have to begin with in the first place. I think but those two things should be separate. That was a misnomer. Separate. That was a misnomer. They were doing that anyway. They were doing roll ups back in the nineties. The big was all was always swallowing the little. You didn't need a, You didn't need a government regulation for that. That was going to happen anyway. Well, Plus, you know, if you took if you take away what yeah. you allow, say again, you allow the banks to 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 do all of all, all of this, uh, you know, wild stuff with the money, and then you want to come in and say, oh, well, I'm going to rein this part in. Well, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It, it you, you you're still you're still not dealing with the issue. You know, they're able to take you know the dollar that you give them and cut it down a hundred different ways. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That's not how you do banking. That is mm -hmm. not how you're supposed to do banking. But yeah, yeah I mean, they yeah. allow it. Mm -hmm. And now you want to say, oh, Glass Steagall, and you got to do this. None of that stuff matters, man. Let enterprise be enterprise and let people do what they're going to do. And you will have, uh, you know, the economy growing. If you get your hands out of people's pocket, because all this whole thing about, you know, uh, anti uh, monopoly and all this other stuff. Is all fake. All you did was make those companies bigger, badder, and deafer, to mm -hmm. borrow a term. All right, that's all you did. Mm. You didn't. You didn't stop anything. So if we take if we take away, you know, the way that they operate, which is take away the treachery of the operation, you can let a bank own whatever and do whatever it wants to do. Why not? Right. But you know, the, but the thing with dude, the, the, I mean, like I, I get the example which you said with the uh, with uh, with roll ups. Yeah, they've been doing roll ups forever. And, I mean, God, it goes even further back, even before the nineties. But um, one of the things, real quick, man, is it, it's just the fact that when you have a local bank, the local bank cannot get in cahoots with an investment bank and use the client's assets that are in the local bank as collateral for the back end bets. Of the uh, the larger bank and 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 the local bank. Do you get what I'm saying? That's what it, it safeguarded that. No, I mean, but you didn't. No, 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 no. Yeah, it did that, but no, it didn't. That's what they said it was going to do. It did way more than that. It went way over than that. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. you. I mean, clients' funds is clients' funds. So, right. but the question yeah. is, would the derivative market be where it is today if it were not for the repeal of Dodd Frank? And the answer is no. I put it to you like this. Even with all those rules. I'm sorry, not place, Dodd Frank. I meant to say Glass Steagall. Jesus Christ. Right. Even with all, but see, you had the Glass Steagall in place and it didn't right. do anything. That's my well, point. No, it, it really did do something, man. It, okay, it question for you. Question for you. Was that rule in place when your boy John Corzine robbed a billion dollars of his clients' money? No, it wasn't. It was it was repealed in 1999, right before the run up to the to, to that's and then they popped off the subprime party. You you, there, there, there's my case in point. There's my, there's my case in point. Prior to Glass Steagall, look here's I'll give you an example. When Glass, remember the SNL scandal? Okay, well, hold on. right, hold on, hold remember on. SNL? All right, yeah, yes, yes, correct. Okay, what happened? Yeah. Who? How many bankers were jailed? How many bankers were jailed? I oh. do not recall. Why? It was a hundred. I think it was one hundred and twenty, maybe, that were jailed. They went to jail. They went to prison. Okay. 
they were thrown in the slammer because of laws like Glass Steagall. And, and what year was this? I think it was eighty four. Okay, so then if that was if that was the case, then what happened under the under the same SNL thing you're talking about? What happened with long term capital management? How many of them went to prison? Uh, uh, say that repeat that again. Long term capital management when they basically what year, what blew year up was the that? economy, the global economy back in like ninety two, between ninety two and ninety four. Why didn't any of them go to prison? That was like one of your first real billion dollar bailouts. Why didn't they go to prison? Why weren't they allowed to fail and go to prison? Why did the government have to backstop them? And again, the same law was in place. My point is, these laws mean nothing. They turn them on and off whenever they want. They'll say, okay, for you, V, we're going we're gonna to use the law exists, so we're going to nail you with it. But that's why we're going to let you go. We both oh, did yeah, the same crap. Crap. Well, you, you yeah, I agree with that, dude. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah totally. So, totally, to yeah. me, uh, it makes it of no effect. LTCM Why even have them? What was, was bailed out, right. right. Why even have them? You feel what I'm saying? So, okay, fine. So, you, you, you take away your glass steagle, but then you, you come in here with this Dodd Frank. And all you're doing is like repetition. You're just making government bigger. Yeah, it, and then it, they it, stuff it, all these other rules into it with it. It's right, not like it, they're just tackling one little thing. They say right. that, but they put a thousand different other laws and rules in there on top of that. Mm -hmm. And and and, and the, here's the problem. The other the other problem is you're right. They, they put they put a million rules and regulations on top of it. On uh, and see, it, it, the, you can put whatever law you want on the books. At the end of the day, is who the hell's enforcing it? And if you and you had an ironclad law like Glass Steagall, but how's it going to help you when you have the SEC that looks the other direction? Boom, and that's what yeah. we've seen with with, with long term capital management. When they went bust, you're right, dude. You 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 got me. Why didn't they those a holes go to jail? You got me, because the freaking SEC was again caught with their you know with their pants down, looking the other direction. Mm hmm. Because that, and that's what's happening here today, man. With the regulators and the criminals are walking in lockstep with each other. Right. It's a selective law. You're See, right. now, now you go to jail, so Dex. Uh, you know, collect uh, two hundred on the way out. You know, exactly. Now, someone in the trade room wrote something, and and th there you go. That's perfect. They said that Financial Modernization Act of nineteen ninety nine and the Commodity Futures Modernization Act of two thousand opened the floodgates of counterfeiting and rehypothecation. Re yes. See, that's see, that's the issue. That word, that R word, right there. That rehypothecation. If you take, see, why you got to have that? Why can't you allow the bank to say we're gonna give y'all more leverage to operate? But why they gotta have that though? The, uh, what does that have to do? Point. I mean, re rehypothecation that, that has nothing to do with it. That Bro, has and, nothing to do with allowing them to. People don't realize rehypothecation, right? And rehypothecation, most people don't realize they can rehypothecate a client's account up to one hundred and forty percent of what the account is. And that see that's that's criminal Crazy. enterprise. You don't need that. They don't no. they don't need to be able to do that to say, you know what, we're gonna allow the banks to to you know we'll we'll let a we'll let a bank own a brokerage firm. Not a problem. I don't I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But I have a problem when you say it's legal theft that they can rehypothecate your money yeah. from a segregated account into their account. Yep. That's no. See, how come a bank can do it, but an accountant can't do it? If an accountant does it, he's going to jail. That's that's commingling of assets. That's manipulation. Uh, you know, that's that's all that. He yeah. going to jail, but a bank can do it, and it's fine. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? See how the foolishness with with with, with how they 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 do these laws. But if you just take away that part right there, everything would have been fine. No, there would be no harm, no foul. Just yeah. say, no, you're not allowed to touch clients' money. Absolutely. No, you can't use clients' money for leverage. No, you can't do that. And, and what's that other thing? I, I, I can't think of the term. What's the term? You know, the way the banks do their, their finance, you know, their lending and stuff. Oh, uh, a fractional reserve lending. There you man. go. That's it. There you, you go. Know, Thank can't you. Even, that should be legal, bar none. That's up there with the, with the rehypothecation. Fractional oh, yeah. reserve lending it, it, and rehypothecation yep. needs to go out of the window, and then you can let everything else ride after that. Yeah, I agree. And we have a booming market and a booming economy. And we have actually a free market at that point. Right. 
See what I'm saying? At least it'd be more free. Yeah, it'll be a lot more free. Correct. All right, dude, we got about a minute left, man. Why don't you uh, plug your site? I'm sorry we had to do this uh, a little late today. Some things that ran up, and that's why the Trading Trade Room was running late today. But we'll be back on a regularly scheduled program. So, uh, Dex, give out your info, man, how people can follow you, how they can get involved in the Trading Dome. Uh, Go ahead. That is postwavetrading.com, postwavetrading.com. You can go and sign up with the site and be kept abreast of latest breaking things as they come. And you can come and learn how to trade the market, sign up for our weekly post-wave price triggers, and access uh, to the premium trading room where you will learn and be able to make money in these markets and also be able to hedge your physical holdings and be able to profit by what the central banks do and don't do. And that's what we do every day. Absolutely. And that, folks, is Dex, the algo capitalist. There is none other. And I am Senor Silverback. And we'll be back here next week uh, at 2 p.m. Hopefully, get everything going. I know, right? uh, (laughs) Last week was me. This week is you. I know, man. We're getting old, bro. All this doctor's visits and this, that, and the other, and blood work, and yay, yay. You know it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right, so uh, next week it is, guys. Follow, uh, follow Dex uh, on. T- you got your Twitter account set up or what? Oh yeah, um, my Twitter. I have all that. I think it's on my thing. Uh, what am I? I'm the Vulcan on this on Twitter or yeah, yeah, Post yeah. Seventy two. I have no idea. I Nothing don't even fool with this stuff that much. Well, but... you can follow. You can follow me, and I'll I'll point you to to Dex. It's uh, at the Rogue Money, and check us out on RogueMoney.net. Thank you all for listening, and we'll be back next week. Hasta la pasta. We are out. Peace.